welcome to the past paper walkthrough for the Edexcel A-Level Chemistry Paper 1, uh, the specimen paper that was released in 2015 along with a new specification. So let's get straight to uh, question 1. So question one starts with a few multiple choices, uh, which we've grown to expect with Edexcel, even though this is a new specification. So uh, question one, um, it's about the bonding and structure of molecules. So A, which element exists as discrete molecules in its solid state? Well, what do they mean by discrete molecules? Well, we're looking at uh, individual small molecules here, okay? And if we look down the list, we've got aluminium, iodine, silicon, and sodium. Well, straight away you can tell that these three are, of course, metals, and these don't exist as individual discrete molecules. Iodine, being a non-metal, or group 7, of course, existing in a diatomic molecule, does. So that's our answer here, is iodine. So a fairly straightforward one to, uh, to kick us off with there. B, which compound it has non-polar molecules. So what we're looking for here is the potential for dipoles within these molecules. And if you're not sure, it's always worth drawing them out, maybe doing the, uh, on a separate piece of paper, uh, drawing the dot and cross diagrams to see if there are any lone pairs. Of course, we're looking for any differences in electronegativity. Well, if, I, if you look at all these molecules here, ammonia, CO2, uh, H2S, and water, then, of course, they all contain um, some sort of dipole, okay? We're going to definitely expect it here between um, nitrogen and hydrogen and oxygen and hydrogen because that's a huge dipole there. It leads to hydrogen bonding. Um, so we are going to expect those to be very, very polar. So those are discounted straight away. H2S, very, very similar, of course, to H2O since sul uh, sulfur and oxygen are both in group 6. So that's definitely a polar molecule because this sulfur has two lone pairs on it, just like the oxygen does. Which leaves us with CO2. Yes, we are going to get um, a dipole between the central carbon and the oxygens either side, but because the two oxygens are both negative, there's no real positive and negative end to the molecule. So there is going to be a difference in electronegativity, but no overall dipole in the molecule. So CO2 here is our non-polar molecule in amongst all of these here, okay? C, uh, which is the best reason for why the boiling temperature of hydrogen fluoride is much higher than that of hydrogen chloride? Well, our options are as follows. The instantaneous dipole induced dipole forces are stronger in HF. Well, I'm gonna discount that straight away because I know that uh, these are polar molecules. So if anything, the intermolecular forces are going to be dipole-dipole forces. They're not induced dipole at all. Uh, HF molecules, B, uh, have smaller mass. Well, that only really comes to play when uh, we are looking at induced dipole forces. They can play a part, so uh, we can maybe think about that, but really it's more to do with uh, induced dipoles, the, the actual mass of that, okay? There are intermolecular hydrogen bonds in HF. Well, yes, there are, and there aren't in HCl. Why? Because, of course, we only get hydrogen bonding when hydrogen is directly bonded to a highly electronegative element. And, of course, in that case, this is fluorine. Nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine are our three um, highly electronegative elements here, and chlorine not being one of those. And last but not least, just to double check, HF molecules have fewer electrons. Um, well, again, this is true, but that only really plays a part when we're looking at induced dipole or London forces, where, of course, we're not looking at that here. We're looking at uh, dipole forces. So C is our answer, purely because all these indicate, well, you know, the intermolecular forces are induced dipole. They're not, okay? They are um, hydrogen bonding between HF and just purely dipole-dipole between HCl molecules, okay? So our answer here is C. Moving on to a more written answer now, D, the dot and cross diagram for a molecule of tin chloride in gaseous state is as follows. So just looking at this, okay, we can see that we've got two covalent bonds here between the chlorine and the tin, okay, being in group four, there are two electrons left over as a lone pair here, okay, so that's going to actually affect the shape of the molecule, of course. 
So using electron pair repulsion theory, or VSEPR, explain the shape of this molecule. Well, first thing we need to say is that the molecule is going to be V-shaped or bent, okay? And this is because the lone pair on the tin is more repulsive than the bonding pairs here uh, between the tin and the chlorine atoms, okay? So this forces these chlorine atoms closer together, lowering this bond angle down the bottom and increasing the angle between the lone pair and the chlorines, okay? If you like, the top of the uh, V-shape here is your tin and the two chlorines are down here. So purely because uh, this lone pair is more repulsive than the bonding pairs, that's why it ends up V-shaped. And then part two, predict a value for the tin to chlorine bond angle. So this bond angle here between the two chlorines. Well, this is 107 degrees. Now we need to justify this as it asks us in the question. Well, the bond angle will be smaller than trigonal planar, okay? Because trigonal planar insinuates there are three bonding pairs around that central atom. They're all equally repulsive, which gives us 120 degrees. This isn't the case here. We've got a really repulsive lone pair at the top, so that's gonna force these two bonding pairs closer together, so it's gonna be less than 120. Equally, it's gonna be less than 109.5 because tetrahedral insinuates four bonding pairs around that central atom. But again, uh, they're all equally repulsive, nowhere near as repulsive as a lone pair. Okay, so there's this lone pair again, similar to the first part of the question, causing these two atoms to be uh, forced closer together. Okay, so again, this V-shape, this 107 degrees, is uh, because a lone pair is more repulsive than bonding pairs, okay? So really this is gonna be fairly similar to something like water, okay? Or um, uh, H2S, like we saw over here in, in 1B, okay? So uh, 107 degrees, V-shaped, you know, you can't really go wrong with that in terms of a bond angle for a V-shaped molecule, okay? So that is uh, question one.